Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I look tired. It's because it's a super, super rainy day here in Charlotte and I decided to sleep in. So I just woke up. I was like having myself a nice cozy day. So I just put makeup on and I know I look tired, but I just want to say hi to any new faces. Thank you guys so much for subscribing and sticking around. It literally it's so incredible it means the absolute world to me but if you're not subscribed make sure that you do i post lots of lifestyle grad school fashion tech content i would say i'm a lifestyle channel so i kind of like dip my toe in everything so yeah i thought i could do a what's on my iphone today i feel like these are just like cult classic videos that you can make whenever and everyone enjoys them so that is what we are going to do today i think i have a lot of really good apps to help with productivity when it comes to school obviously photo editing and things like that so i wanted to share them with you guys here is my friend nice and sleek let me tell you why i don't have like a super cute case on here so every single phone i've ever had i have shattered like i'm not kidding every single one either the back or the front so basically when i got this phone i was like okay i cannot afford to keep breaking my phone so i'm gonna get her a heavy duty case so that's what i did i got a otterbox I don't know the exact title like off the top of my head, but I will have it linked in the description box for you guys. It's just a basic black OtterBox case. As you can see, it's kind of dirty. Sorry, I didn't prep for this. And then on the front, I also got a like heavy duty screen protector from OtterBox again. So she's got a screen protector on and a nice heavy duty black case. OtterBox has definitely like up their game. I hadn't bought from them in a long time. I was just buying like cheap Amazon cases. So this case is really protective, but it's slim, which if you guys remember like years ago, OtterBox cases were like fat. So it's nice and slim and sleek. I know like there's other brands obviously like Casetify who has like protective and cute cases. So I think I might look into them next. Casetify, hit me up. I don't know if I said, but this is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I should have done research for this video. I don't even know what the heck I'm talking about. Yes, this is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So my like lock screen wallpaper is a photo of me and my boyfriend. I like for my lock screen to be something that makes me happy. Like if I glance down at my phone. So it's usually a picture of me and family, me and friends, me and my boyfriend, whatever. Something like that. Okay, so brush you in a little bit. And now I'm going to start re screen recording. And we are just going to go through my iPhone. So the theme that I think you will notice when we go through my iPhone is that pretty much everything I've done is to lower my screen time. I really want my screen time to be lowered. I want to stay off my phone. I just don't think it's good for you to have super high screen time. Don't get me wrong. Mine is not super low. It's still high. So I really needed to do all these things like categorizing and putting things away so that I would hopefully decrease my screen time because I do do a lot of social media, so I am on it a lot. So whatever I can do to prevent myself from looking at it is kind of what I wanna do. So on the very first page of my phone, as you can see here, it is all widgets. The top widget is the calendar widget. The middle widget is the screen time widget. And then I have a photos widget and the weather widget. This is like my just go-to, like when I wake up in the morning, these are the things I wanna look at. I usually wanna tap on the weather, see what's going on. So today, Obviously we have some pretty crappy weather. That's good to know like, cause when I first get up, I like to take my dog out and whatnot. Um, and then I have photos right here. I just like this. It like swipes through different photos. Right now we have a selfie, which is just great. Exactly what I wanted you guys to see. But usually, you know, it's photos of past vacations, family, friends, it makes me happy. Then on top of that, as you see, can see we have screen time. I have this widget nice and big because like I said, um, as I go throughout my day, like when I open up my phone, it's the first thing I really see. So if it's like five hours up 50% or whatever, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to stay off my phone. So I'll open up the screen time for you. Today I've been on for 22 minutes for the week. It's down 8%, but my daily average is four hours. I would say that's about right. So you know, still trying to lower that. I would like to get it down below below four is like my goal for this week. And then on top of that, I have my calendar. Again, what I like to look at first thing in the morning when I wake up. So we'll click on this. So today, all I had going on is film what's on my iPhone. I've had a really busy week. So this is what I like to look at when I first open up my phone, what I have going on today, my screen time, if it's the middle of the day, so I can know I need to cut it out. 
um, nice little photo collage and then the weather for today. I'll talk about my background really quickly. So this is just a like clear water background from Pinterest. I can try to link it in the description box. But for my actual like phone background with all the apps and everything on it, I like to have a very simple basic aesthetic background so that I can see all the apps because I don't like to have a really busy background. And then, you know, if things look messy, I like it to look nice and clean and like plain almost. I want it to look very like clean and put together. So this I just got off Pinterest. I don't even remember what I looked up. I think I looked up neutral aesthetic phone backgrounds, like something like that. So next thing we are going to go over here to my next page. As you can see, I still won't have any social media or anything like that. This is again, trying to make it harder for me to get on those things. But these are more like my basic apps that you use and you want to have access to quickly. So as you can see up here, I have Spotify. I like this because it tells me like what I was last listening to. It'll like pop up a podcast if a podcast is new. This is the playlist I've been listening to lately in the mornings and stuff. It's a really nice playlist. I got it from Danielle Carolyn. She's been suggesting it. So followed it. I really liked it. Um, here's like my home page on my Spotify. Windows down, this is my playlist I've been working on for the summer. I went ahead and started my summer playlist, so you guys can go check this out if you want to. You can follow me on Spotify. I'm public, I think. So here are some of the songs I'm working on for my summer playlist. Then I have obviously been listening to Natalie Barbu's podcast. I like hers a lot. It's a good business podcast. And then That's So Sabotage. This is a really great new podcast that I just found. I really like it. It's really funny it's actually three girls and they have really good energy together beast mode this is like a huge spotify playlist that i love in the gym i like it because each song they like blend them into each other so it's like continuous if you listen to it in order so this is a really good workout playlist and then gals on the go i've been listening to of course new episode it says and then oat milk lattes in the mountains is the other playlist I like to listen to when I'm just chilling like in the morning and whatnot. I like to have that there so I can like put on some music, put on a podcast easily. Then I have um, Pinterest. I have this widget set up on my words Pinterest board. So my quotes Pinterest board. So I always see a quote right there. So this one says visualize your highest self and show up as her. So if we go to my Pinterest and we go down to the words category that as you can see these are the quotes that will pop up like they change every hour like I said so I think this is great I love seeing a quote I'm a big quotes person they actually really motivate me so so then we have all these other apps of course I have my camera and my photos super quick and easy to go to I have my settings can someone tell me how to turn off these notifications right here and I just don't want them there. So if someone can tell me how to get this to go away, please let me know because I don't really like notifications, like badges. Um, but anyway, so I have settings, app store, FaceTime, contacts, notes, reminders, health, clock, maps, find my friends, Safari, and mail. Like I said, this is just like your basic iPhone apps that I might need quick access to in the morning. So I just keep them all on this page. And then down at the bottom of my screen, I have phone, Spotify, and messages. I would say those are what I use the most, so they are down at the bottom. And then my last page is my like crazy apps page. So I, as you can see, have categorized everything into boxes. I know some people hate this, some people love it. I go through phases. I used to have none of these little boxes, but now I like them. And again, it's literally just to push myself away from constantly clicking on Instagram or whatever. So this is what I have. And as you can see, the background looks really good with the boxes and the apps. Like it's not too much. It looks very clean. Also, as you can see, I do have pretty much all of my badges turned off on my phone. The ones that I keep on, I will tell you, is my email because I'm constantly checking my email. I want to know if I have a new email. I have on Snapchat, which is in this social one, which I don't have any Snapchats right now. But that's because, you know, my friends, that's honestly the way we like keep in touch these days is Snapchat. And then the only other ones I have on badges for are phone calls in case I get an important voicemail and messages. Other than that, all my notifications are turned off because I don't need to know if someone commented on my Instagram photo. I don't need to know if I have a DM. Those are things I can get to when I have the time. 
Again, if someone knows how to turn off this freaking settings notification badge, please let me know because I couldn't find it in the notification section. Let's just go through every single one of these, I guess, and I will tell you guys like what apps I think you need. Maybe I'll clean out my phone while we do this and delete some apps. Who knows? First, obviously, we'll go into social. This is pretty um, self-explanatory. I have Instagram. So here is my Instagram feed at the moment. Here's my profile at the moment. If you're interested, go follow me. I'm trying to grow the Instagram. So... This is what we have going on here. Then I have my TikTok. I post daily vlogs on there pretty much almost every single day. So here's what my TikTok looks like. Feel free to go follow me over there. Snapchat, like I said, this is like how me and my like college friends stay in touch. We have like a group Snapchat. Just because texting is a lot more work, so we'll like send random updates throughout our days. Facebook, Clubhouse is like, if you haven't heard of it, it's a new app where people get on there and you literally talk. So this is what my clubhouse looks like right now. Um, here's my thing if you want to go follow me over there. It's pretty fun. I would say I, I try to go on it like every few days and just listen in to people chatting. I have done one clubhouse room where I was like the moderator. And it's fun. It's fun to talk to people. It's like a different social media app. There's no pictures, no videos, nothing. You just hear your voice and other people's voices. Then I have Anchor. This is what I distribute my podcast with. Up for it podcast if you don't know it's on spotify apple podcast google play all the big podcast things so anchor is how i distribute my podcast and then i have like to know it this i've just recently started dabbling in so you guys can check me out over there if you want here's like my profile it's probably not that great but you can like i can link what i'm wearing and my outfits and stuff so I've been like slowly trying to incorporate that more and more as you can see as I like grow my Instagram and post more fashion type photos I am trying to link them over here so make sure you guys go follow me on there I honestly don't think I have a follower do I how do I know see I don't know how to work this app <laughs> how do I know oh I have one follower thank you to that one follower I love you and I have LinkedIn LinkedIn is super important obviously for my career and making connections uh, networking is huge in a graduate level program and in health administration. Health administration is very political, so you do want to make those connections. So LinkedIn, I use all the time. And then of course, like I said, podcasts. I listen to my podcasts on Spotify personally, but this is how I keep track of my reviews because, because this is where you get reviews. You can't get reviews on Spotify, so that is why I have this app. So that is all the social apps that I have. They're, I would say, the main basic ones. I try to keep up with everything. So then we'll go over here to my YouTube category. This is obviously for YouTube. So I have YouTube Studio. That is the app that tells you like your new comments. It tells you your analytics and stuff for your channel. Of course, I have the YouTube app because I watch YouTube videos all the time, like when I'm doing cardio and stuff. And then I have Slack and Patreon. Then we'll go over here to phone editing. I have a lot of these because editing is everything and I feel like there is not one app that does everything. If there is, let me know, but like someone come, go into business with me. We need to create an app that does everything that these apps do. So first I have Lightroom, of course. This is four times when I was using presets. I like Lightroom just to have it. Presets are nice. Visco is what I use now to edit my Instagram photos. So here's my camera roll, lol. But Basically, I go over here, edit, and then I use the A4 filter. And then airbrush, I like this for whitening my background. Basically, you can use the whitening tool and whiten like walls and backgrounds and just make the photo overall brighter. Tezza, this is what I use now for my YouTube thumbnails, actually. I just use the vintage filter, and that's what I put on my YouTube thumbnails. See what I mean? Like, the, they all have like different filters and stuff, but no one can do it all. Procreate Pocket is what I use to create digital doodles. I have a whole video on how I did that if you're interested. PicMonkey is how I create my thumbnails. I do do this on my computer, but I like to have the app on here just in case, like I need to quick fire make a thumbnail. Pick Play Post is what I use to create like collages. You know, if I ever want to do like a before and after photo or whatever, I do collages with that. Photo Vault is a photo vault. Obviously, you have to put a password in to get in there. Canva, of course, if you haven't heard of Canva, you probably don't do social media, but Canva is just a really great app to create designs and graphics and stuff like that. As you can see, I mainly use this for my podcast Instagram. So this is where I make like new episode graphics and story graphics and stuff like that. 
Then we'll go over here. We have Canva Stories. Canva Stories has really good templates for cute Instagram stories. Honestly, I don't use it that much, but as you can see, there's like just all these different stories so you can make your stories really pretty and aesthetic if you wanted to. Then I have Retouch. Retouch is the app I use to remove things from my background if I need to do that. So then Unum, this is how I plan out my Instagram feed. I kind of am new to this. I just started it. Okay, well you guys just watched me um, use up Unum until they won't let me anymore. So that's the tea. So we're about to delete Unum, honestly, because I'm not paying to plan out. So if you guys have an Instagram planning feed app, let me know in the comments because it won't let me add any more rows without subscribing, which I'm 100% not doing. It was gonna promote you on them, and you screwed me. Next, I have Lens Buddy. If you are on TikTok, I'm sure you've heard of this. You just go down here and you can like hit how many photos you want them to take, how long apart photos or portraits. Um, so this is how I take like a lot of my Instagram photos by myself, as you can see. Um, and then Headliner is how I create audiograms for my podcast. Um, then I have Finance. So of course I have Venmo, you guys know the deal with Venmo, same with PayPal and Cash App. I have all the payment apps because um, you never know how you're going to get paid with working with a brand and also I pay a lot of people with Venmo. Is it just me or is everyone taking Venmo these days? Like I got my hair done the other day, she took Venmo. When I got my eyebrows microbladed, Venmo. Got a tattoo. Okay, I got this little F on my wrist like a couple weeks ago and they took Venmo so we love that. Get Upside saves you, that's going to have my location on there. Get Upside saves you gas. If you like get on it before you pump gas, you can like register where you are and it'll save you a few cents per gallon. Receipt Pal is an app where you get points by uploading photos of your receipts and then eventually you can like get money back and stuff. Um, I kind of fell off of using it. I used it for a while and then I fell off because honestly you have to upload a lot of receipts to get any kind of money back. But if you're really dedicated, then it probably would be worth it. Wells Fargo, obviously, um, banking app, Secu, banking app. This mobile access is Secu again, but sometimes the Secu app doesn't work, so I just have a like quick press app to take me to the website. School, these are some pretty good apps. So I have Canva, that's like what my school does. My grades and my schooling and everything on Google Docs, that's how me and my group members collaborate on most things. Google Drive, same thing. That's where I keep all my schoolwork so that I won't lose it. Google Sheets, same thing. Duo Mobile is you have to like two factor authenticate yourself to log into Canva. So I have that app to do that. GroupMe is how I communicate with all of my fellow class members. Zoom is obviously how I have class every night since we are online. Sometimes if I'm not home or something, I have to do it on my phone. Google Meet, same thing. I have some meetings and stuff sometimes on Google Meet. And then Flora, I'm still kind of trying to figure this out, but basically you can set a timer and like the longer that you have your timer, it's like it grows, you grow plants. So I don't really fully get it. I have, honestly haven't figured it out, but I've heard a lot of people talk about it. So then let's go over to fitness. I have an interval timer. This is a good app if you like want to do an interval workout but you don't want to constantly be looking at the clock because you can set intervals so you can do like 30 second interval 10 second break whatever like over and over and then it'll count down and it'll like beep when it's time for you to switch so that's nice my macros plus is a food tracking app map my run is what i use if i'm going on a walk and i want to track how long i have been walking lifetime is the gym that i go to so that's just how i register for any yoga classes, cycle classes, or even that's how you check in. You like scan your phone. All Trails shows me trails around here or wherever you are. And it also will track your hike if you are on a trail, which I think is nice and also safe. My Fitness Hell is another food tracking app, of course. And then Fem is a period tracking app. I don't use that very much. I probably should. I know it's good to like know your cycle and stuff. So on to travel, we have Lyft and Uber. You guys know what those are. Um, park mobile is how I park around the city in Charlotte for a lot of the like parking spots. You can either pay like with quarters or you can go on the park mobile app and type in your location and your spot number and you can pay on your phone, which is extremely convenient because I don't ever like using those little things. I think they're unnecessarily difficult and they are dirty. <laughs> um, Expedia is how I always book my trips. I'm not kidding, Expedia always has good deals always always flights trips anything i use expedia airbnb of course you guys know what that is as well 
Bird, um, Bird are those little scooters that a lot of big cities have. Charlotte has them, they're so fun. You scan the little scooter and then you can hop on and you can scooter all around. It's super fun, it's cheap too, like it's not expensive and it's a fun way to explore the city. And then Yelp is a lot of times how I find any restaurants or anything like that that I wanna go to. So then over to home search, I have apartments and Zillow. It's very normal when you're like going through this stage of life, you do not have a permanent place to live. So I move like almost every year basically. I will be moving again in July, so look out for those videos. So I'm constantly like looking at apartments and also Zillow. I was gonna open it up, but it shows my location, so I don't wanna do that. Um, Franklin, if you don't know, Franklin is my dog, so he has his own section. Um, Skip Town is a dog park and brewery here in Charlotte. They have an app to check in, which is great because everyone does have to have an ID on file because it's a bar. Banfield is where he does his veterinary stuff. Wag is a dog walking app if you haven't heard of it. I think I've used it like three times total with him. Yeah, three times in a year. It's just really nice to have if you know you're going to be gone for more than like a couple hours. You can hide a key somewhere and hire somebody to come to your apartment and walk your dog. It's honestly extremely expensive and stupid expensive. That's why I don't use it a lot and I walk him myself because I can. I mean, a 30 minute walk is basically $30 with tip. It's ridiculously expensive, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And if you love your dog and you're gonna be gone too long during a day, they need a walk and they need someone to come let them out. Next, I have all my shopping apps. I have Groupon, that is where you can get some discounts. Etsy is a small business owner like type app. I love Etsy, they have such unique finds on there. I ordered some candles the other day. Poshmark is how I sell a lot of my clothes. Amazon, I'm on there way too much. Shutterfly is how I print my photos usually, so like you can just upload photos from your phone and they'll mail them to you. TaskRabbit is basically like an Uber, but for tasks. Like you can hire people on here to come mount your TV on your wall. You can hire them to come clean your house. Like pretty much anything that you can't do or don't feel like doing, you can hire someone to come do it on TaskRabbit. Pinterest, Pinterest is my love. I love Pinterest. I get so much motivation from there. Mira May is where I get my facials. Zara is Zara. Let's open up Zara. I got the Zara app because I hate the website and Bianca Franco told me that the app is like much easier to shop than the website. She was like, I never use the website because it's horrible. So the app is definitely better. Still not amazing, but it's definitely better than the website. Then we go go over to food. I have Chick-fil-A. They have a point system, like one of a really good point system. And I love ordering on the app. It makes it so much easier. Same with Starbucks. Point system plus ordering on the app is easier because if you have a complicated drink, then you don't have to say it. You can just put it in. Duncan, same thing, they have a point system. I don't use their app as much though. Open Table is how a lot of restaurants here in Charlotte take reservations, so I have that app. And then Insomnia, I don't even know why I have the Insomnia app because I can't tell you the last time I used the app. We usually just go in person. Yeah, so I might delete this app, I don't need this. Then we have games, we're getting to the end y'all. Piccolo is a really fun like drinking game with your friends. So you can go over here and they have all these different like things that you guys can do. We'll just do the getting started together. So Krista, give out four sips to a player shorter than you. If it's impossible, drink them. And then you just, you know, you keep going through and there's a lot of fun, like different things. Aqua Park IO is just like a water slide game. Hole IO is like a hole you like eat a city. Blocks, Homescapes, Sims, Push Em All, Bakery Story, and CoStar. Um, I do play games like when I'm bored. So I have these one here. CoStar is what tells you like your birth chart and everything. Um, my moon is in Pisces and my sun is in Aries. I'm very much in Aries. So then we have random. These are apps I like never use slash don't need but don't want to delete. Bitmoji. Do I still have to have this app? I had this because you had to have it to have a Bitmoji like on your phone. So I have that. Voice memos, wallet, calculator, measure, files, and translate. Apps I pretty much never use but I have them here on my phone. So that is what is on my iPhone. Okay, so I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing what is on my iPhone. I hope that you guys kind of maybe learned of a new app or learned of a new app that you don't want or something. It was super fun sharing it with you guys. I love doing like random tech videos. Let me know what you guys want to see from me coming up in the future. I'm definitely going to be doing some more weekly vlogs and stuff like that. I know you guys love those. 
but I'm about to get on with my day so thank you so much for watching make sure you like comment and subscribe I love you guys so much and I will see you very soon in my next one bye guys cheers